Are you kidding? Oh, it's Twitter's April 28th. Are you right, kidding, 8K. Musk? Do you really think that that's... You're, you're the, saying, is that the best you got? That's right. the best this you was had? What, this was the document he originally cited for his concerns. But the question remains as to whether he is going to be able to show proof that his concerns are valid. In this video, Tesla stock has a quiet start to earnings week. FSD beta 10.13 release notes leak with some juicy details. The smartest analysts on Wall Street increased their Tesla stock price target to a whopping $380 per share and Jim Cramer goes off the deep end on the Elon Musk Twitter deal. So let's get into it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. If you want to take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon and investment themed merch in the merch store. So check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support. Tesla reports Q2 earnings on Wednesday this week and as always I'll be live streaming the earnings call so don't forget to come say hi in the chat. Tesla stock today up 0.2 of a percent opening a few percent higher and selling off in the later part of the day. Tesla managed to buck the trend today with the Nasdaq 100 shedding almost 1%. Amazon stock flat today, Apple stock today down 2%, Alphabet, Google's parent company down 2.5%, Rivian stock up a sixth of a percent, Lucid stock up about 1.5% today, and the bell curve continues to prove its existence once again today, Nikola stock up 3.5%, and ARK's flagship ETF down 0.4%. of percent. I'll be very curious to see what happens to Tesla stock in the lead up to earnings and following their earnings report. No predictions here. At least 60% of the time, Tesla stock does the opposite of what I would expect it to do based on their earnings results. So we'll see what happens. But for the record, full disclosure, I did buy another 14 shares of Tesla stock overnight, around $735 per share. And speaking of Tesla's earnings this week, as we see here, quote, Tesla's Bitcoin holdings could result in a $460 million hit for the car maker, Barclays says. Now, this is pretty simple math here. This is about right. Again, just for context, this isn't an actual loss. This is accounting magic. The value of Bitcoin went down during the quarter, the lowest price point of Bitcoin during the quarter versus Tesla's original purchase price for Bitcoin equals the imaginary loss that isn't a loss unless they actually sell. I don't make the accounting rules, I'm just telling you guys and girls. No investor is going to pay attention to this because it's one off. It's not an actual loss and it's meaningless, but it will materially impact Tesla's on paper earnings. Yet despite this half a billion dollar impairment, Tesla is still going to bring in a gigantic multi billion dollar profit in a quarter where they had factory shutdowns and massive volume reductions. Talk about a financial resilient company. However, the reason we're in this article isn't to do with the Bitcoin impairment. <laughs> it's to do with the price target from Barclays. This is the paragraph I want to get to. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Barclays also increased its price target on Tesla stock to $380 per share, which is up from $370 per share, though it still represents more than 47% potential downside from Friday's close. So the question is, with a $380 per share price target on Tesla stock, are Barclays at all credible when it comes to Tesla stock? Let's find out. We're over on the tiprank.com profile of Brian Johnson of Barclays. So as we can see, Brian has a stunning five-star rating, almost flawless. He's ranked number seven. Oh, hang on. This isn't adding up. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Ah, oh, they fill the stars in. Ah, I see. If we zoom in close enough, it looks like Brian has one quintillionth of a star rating. Rank number 7,639 out of 7,915 analysts on tip ranks, placing Brian firmly in the bottom 4%. Hmm. Bottom 4% analyst thinks Tesla stocks worth $380 per share. Need I say more? Clearly not. However, <laughs> That's not going to stop me. As we can see, Brian Johnson's success rate over the last 12 months, worse than a coin toss at 43%, the average return over the past 12 months, down 7.6%. Not so great. Let's have a quick look. We'll get back to this ridiculous Tesla price target of $380 per share. I mean, what planet are these clowns on? I don't even know. They believe Tesla stock is worth half its current price, and they believe General Motors stock is going to double in the same period of time. They have a buy rating on Government Motors stock and a sell rating on Tesla stock. A hold rating on Rivian. Is it any wonder that Brian's results here on tipranks.com demonstrates somebody who should be ashamed and embarrassed of everything they've ever had to say about any stocks in the history of stocks. So let's zoom in on Tesla here. Let's go all the way back. Wow. We have a single buy rating back in 2013 when Tesla stock was about 18 bucks a share. Then a hold rating as Tesla continued to scale up production, prove their unassailable lead, win every award ever. Obviously, they were a little bit skeptical. Can they fully get to volume production? How will the Model 3 go? Just before Tesla unveils a Model 3, they're recommending people sell Tesla stock at $44 a share. But hang on a minute. They're recommending people hold it for $48 a share and $46 a share and $55 a share. Why the change of heart? I don't know. For further context, 
Model 3 reveal was around here. And ever since Model 3 was unveiled and then successfully ramped, then Model Y unveiled, then Model Y successfully ramped, and on and on and on. They've had a sell rating on Tesla stock the entire f***ing time. I just have one final thing to say. Clearly, this is what a lack of credibility looks like. I also wonder out loud, how does this guy have a job? That is a serious question. How does this guy have a job? I don't want to be too mean here, but uh, sometimes you just got to say the hard truths. Brian, I don't think you're competent and I don't believe that you should be employed. At least if your employment is contingent on being competent at your job. Imagine this guy coming home to his wife in the evening. Hey honey, how'd you do at work today? Yeah, I did great. I was wrong about everything again and yet I still have a job. But it could be worse. Unbelievably, there's almost 300 analysts on tiprex.com who are less competent at their job than Brian Johnson. Always look for the silver lining. And now a quick look at the leaked notes for FSD beta version 10.3. Might go through all these, just a few key highlights. And once again, I just want to remind everybody watching, we are talking about artificial intelligence here, so pay attention to the terminology such as on the very first point here, improved decision making for unprotected left turns. Decision making equals intelligence. Actually, that's not entirely true as we saw Barclays and Brian Johnson there made some decisions around Tesla stock that clearly don't demonstrate any, and I mean any, intelligence whatsoever. Improve stopping pose while yielding for crossing objects at Chuck Cook style, by the way, I'll explain this, unprotected left turns by utilizing the median safety regions. For those who don't know, Chuck Cook has been doing a bunch of demonstrations of this one absolute fucker of a corner. It's an unprotected turn. Check on YouTube. It's amazing to see this actually listed in the release notes. It goes to show not only is Tesla paying attention to the FSD beta testers, but what other company would do this? I mean, these are literally the release notes for their software describing an extremely esoteric Chuck Cook style unprotected left turn. Next release notes, we'll probably see some updates for the Galileo monorail merge. The final point here, improve lane position error by 5% and lane recall by 12%. This is also important. When Tesla's actually providing numbers, we can see the rate of improvement here. Might not sound like a lot, but a 5% improvement stacked on another 5% improvement, stacked on another one and on and on and on, can go from absolute garbage to superhuman in a lot less time than you might imagine. So let's focus on a few of the key numbers here. Improve lane position error of crossing and merging lanes by 22%. Improved pedestrian and bicyclist velocity by 17%. Improved animal detection recall by 34% and decreased false positives by 8%. Improved detection recall of faraway crossing vehicles by 4%. Improved the is parked attribute as in the vehicle is trying to determine is that vehicle parked or is it active on the road even if it's not moving by 5% by adding 20% more examples to the training set. This is important to understand. 20% more data, 5% improvement. This is probably a good time for me to remind everyone watching that Tesla's growing their production annually around 50% per year, 50% more data being collected by the fleet. You guys see where that's going, right? And the last couple of points here, improve speed limit sign accuracy on digital speed limits by 29%, on signs with difficult relevance by 23%, on three digit speeds by 39%, and on open speed limit end signs by 62%. Neural Network was trained with 84% more examples in the training set. Now I know if you're not an AI nerd, this stuff can seem a little bit overwhelming, but the numbers matter. Every update Tesla is providing in their release notes, the percentage improvement, decrease, the amount of new clips in the training set and so on. This is ultimate transparency. What other companies would share a number? A percentage improvement, something tangible in their release notes. No chance. Instead, you're going to get something like improved unprotected left turns, not improved this by X percent. Tesla must be one of the most transparent companies on the planet. And now a few quick updates on Elon Musk versus Twitter. Twitter has filed in response to Elon Musk's filing, saying that he did not think that the Twitter trial should be expedited. This all happens and this filing comes ahead of the hearing tomorrow in which the judge will determine the schedule of the trial. Um, so interestingly, just looking through this filing here, um, Twitter says twi that Musk's opposition, quote, fails at every level um, and says that he does not present any reason that the trial must wait until next year. He that This filing says, quote, Musk's alleged core issue, the number of spam Twitter accounts, is a contractually irrelevant sideshow that Musk wants to use to disparage Twitter and prolong this litigation. I want to just take a quick moment here. According to Twitter's lawyers, whether or not Twitter has committed securities fraud and lied to the Securities and Exchange Commission about the numbers of bots on their website, apparently is an irrelevant sideshow. This reeks of desperation from Twitter's side. What an absurd statement. Not only is the number of bots on the website relevant, it's core to Elon's turnaround plan. The whole f***ing website is built on advertising, selling products to humans. 
If there are less humans to advertise on the platform than Twitter's public filings claim, everything about the deal changes. The fact that Twitter's lawyers have suggested this is an irrelevant sideshow when it is literally the foundation of how the company makes its money seems to suggest to me that Twitter doesn't have a leg to stand on. I cannot believe the gall here to claim that the body issue is completely irrelevant. It's a sideshow. Desperate times, desperate measures. In this case, the desperate measures being absolutely idiotic, asinine statements as if the bots wouldn't matter. In my opinion, this is a pretty strong signal that Twitter are getting super desperate. Well, hang on guys, sorry, breaking news. This just in, Twitter's lawyers have also said that in the restaurant business, food is just a sideshow and is completely irrelevant. And another statement has just come through as well. In competitive sport, winning is also just a sideshow. Thanks for the insight there. I'm going on to say that there is no reason here um, that, that, that Musk gives no reason to delay this trial. So we will learn more in the hearing tomorrow, which I believe is at 11 a.m. Eastern. Guys, back over to you. Julia, thank you. You can see shares down about half a percentage point. Uh, they say that this very public dispute harms Twitter with each passing day musk is in breach uh yeah it clearly does because, i mean he's really talking about the core in which how they like calculate important metrics of their business the company has said that they've been doing it in 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 the way that they you know have been for years and i mean listen at the end of the day the stock's up 19 percent from you know just a week ago or so and so um it's not harming the stock right now i just fear that if there's some sort of resolution that's adverse to twitter um the stock's going much lower i mean you think about how much you know snap is dead down on a similar revenue base. They're growing faster. They monetize better. We've talked about it a lot on the show here. The quarter that, that Twitter is going to report this week is not going to be particularly great. I just can't imagine that they're going to have much good to say, although they'd love to try to put lipstick on a pig. They're just not going to be able to do that here. So um, at the end of the day, if Musk is gone and the Delaware court is not enforcing him to do anything, this stock has a two handle on it. It's in the 20s very easily, in my opinion. It's not often that I agree with Dan, but in this case, nail on the head. And now over to Jim Cramer who's extremely credible, especially when it comes to matters of Elon Musk and Tesla. He's never been wrong about anything in that realm. He's also not a puppet for certain companies, corporations, or industries. <clears throat> for some reason, uh, the pharmaceutical industry just uh, came to mind, but I just can't figure out why that would be. So let's hear what Jim Cramer has to say about Elon Musk versus Twitter. When it comes to big deals, Carl, I did want to hit Twitter. Shares are down ever so slightly, $37.60. Uh, tomorrow, we will get that hearing in the, in the chancery on whether or not you're going to see an expedited trial. I think there is an expectation uh, that uh, Chancellor McCormick, who, as I had said, was likely to be overseeing the overall trial, the real trial, not tomorrow's hearing, but she also will oversee that, um, is doing so. And, you know, Twitter may have a good case here in terms of saying, hey, the continued broadsides to our reputation, the insinuation somehow that we're committing fraud are not helpful to our business in any way, shape, or form. But did uh, you we see? need to resolve this. Oh my God, he's back. Did you see that he said it was a major flabbergasting event? That the number that they redid, this is the this is the eight. That yeah. this is the one they found one point four million that were reduced out of ninety out of one hundred and ninety. And that's flabbergasting? Uh, no, it is not. No, and that's about the best thing it has. And that is, again, back to the core contention here and one that the that the court is going to have to ultimately decide. And the burden of proof, by the way, is on Musk and his team is... Are the bots on Twitter's platform far, far in excess of the 5% that they cite? Um, and does that represent a material adverse change, an adverse effect on their business? Very going to be very tough um, to potentially prove that. By the way, I, I want to come back to something on set on Thursday on the financing. Everything I hear says that is solid as a rock. There is wow. no expectation that financing is going anywhere. The pricing... We'll see how that ends up performing in terms of whether or not they actually do syndicate the loans and it gets uh, funded, whether it's a loser for Morgan Stanley and the other banks who have signed on. But no sense at all that I'm getting. None. And None. we did have that case I cited, the DOPAC case. I do want to quickly correct myself from Thursday. I said it was a Kohlberg, uh, KKR case. It was Kohlberg in that DOPAC case. My apologies to KKR for that, uh, that quick mistake. Okay, so what Must is leaving out. Five meetings, five meetings to go over what, he, what they had. Throughout this doc, this frivolous document, it makes it sound like that, that Twitter was saying, listen, we're not going to let you in. The opposite. Twitter wanted to be sold for heaven's sake. It was a hostile takeover. They went very quickly, all right, and agreed. Brett, Brett Taylor, did you, did you co They agreed, Microsoft. yeah, they said, fine. We'll right. take 5420, we want to waive business due diligence. And as right. we said, they might. They got it done in a weekend. Right, this document basically says... 
Twitter said whatever you want, but he doesn't do that. He obfuscates. Must what obfuscates. Doc, you've got to cite for people what okay. you're citing. What Jim. he's saying, the principal thing, is that they revised down three days after the agreement. And this is an AK from April 28th. The guide down is so small. Right. That you just have to say, are you kidding? Oh, it's Twitter's April 28th. Are you right, kidding, AK. Musk? Do you really think that that's... You're, you're saying, is that the best you got? That's right. the best this you had? What, this was the document he originally cited for his concerns. But the question remains as to whether he is going to be able to show proof that his concerns are valid. I'm not going to get too bogged down in the details here. You guys and girls can read the court docs, the filings, if you really want to see everything that's going on. But basically what Kramer has said here, is that all you got? He's insinuating that the fact that Twitter... A few days after Elon's acquisition offer, made a revision and said, oops, we f***ed up, we accidentally misreported numbers, oh, we're so sorry, we made a mistake, but here's the actual numbers. The fact that that gave Elon Musk cause for concern, I think, hang on a minute, if they f***ed that up, did they f*** anything else up? Maybe they f***ed up the bot numbers. Let's make sure they didn't f*** those numbers up too, because my whole turnaround plan and acquisition offer is based on them not having f***ed up the numbers. And Jim's response to this is, is that all you got? As if this is unreasonable for Elon Musk to go, hang on, hang on guys, hang on a minute. Let's just make sure that the other numbers that you've been publicly stating aren't also mistakes. The fact that Kramer's suggesting that this isn't valid, is that all you got? Gives me the impression that Kramer somehow has a horse in a race or is just currently suffering from cocaine-induced brain damage. I don't know why, but today seems like it's gonna be a great day. A lot of times when I was short at my hedge fund and I was positioned short, meaning I needed it down, uh, I would uh, create a, um, a level of activity beforehand that could drive the futures. It doesn't take much money. Uh, what you're seeing now is maybe, it probably is a bigger market. Now, maybe you need 10 million in capital to knock this stuff down, but it's a fun game and it's a l lucrative game. There's a skip in my step, a pep in my path. <clears throat> This is just so bizarre. It's as if Jim Cramer is living in another dimension. Let me give you a more relatable example. Just imagine that you're gonna hire a personal chef for your household. You don't have time to cook. You wanna make sure you're getting some nutritious meals. Great. If it turns out on the application from these potential private chefs for you guys and girls to cook for your family, that after you've selected somebody and hired them for the job, they go, oh, sh that's off, guys, I'm so sorry, but on my application, I forgot to actually mention that I've caused three people to die because of my cooking in the past. I cooked some stuff that was kind of poisonous. They ate it and they're dead. I forgot to mention that. At this point, you go, whoa, whoa hey, uh, you know, uh, maybe we need to do a little bit more digging just to make sure you're the right fit for the job. And Jim Cramer's response to you saying, uh, this potential chef that we just hired has actually killed a bunch of people by poisoning them with bad food. Jim Cramer's response, is that all you got? <laughs> Who cares? I mean, that's not a concern. Have you ever been in one of those China stores? You break it, you own it. Bingo. He, he talks about how people get laid off. He didn't want that. No, they were trying no, they, to make their numbers. They have, their numbers aren't that good. They, they have. They, they, we'll see what road Skadden, his attorneys, can go down to try to prove their case. What do they and have? And always. By the way, again, tomorrow the hearing is about whether or not this is going to be expedited, so the trial could begin as soon as, let's call it, mid-September. We'll find out. Well, I, for one, am certainly looking forward to finding out whether or not this trial is expedited and watching the entire thing play out. It continues to remain my firm belief that Twitter are in deep sh**. And this entire case rests on them being able to prove beyond reasonable doubt that less than 5% of their daily monetizable active users are bots. Not only to prove this, but to explain how they've proved this. If Twitter is unable to do this, Elon walks. Simple as that. So, hope you guys and girls have enjoyed the video. And lastly, don't forget to join Patreon with the card in the corner or the link at the pin comment to gain access to loads of exclusive content and perks, including my up-to-date Tesla stock price targets out over the next decade, plus well over 100 exclusive videos and loads of other content and perks. So, I'll see you over on Patreon. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks, and get some free stocks and crypto. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment themed merch in the merch store. If you want to take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. So check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support. And if you're still watching, you're awesome. I read every single comment on this channel and I really appreciate your feedback. So if you've got any thoughts on today's video, questions, comments, or suggestions for a new video, let me know in the comments below. Check the cards on screen now to browse the merch store, join Patreon, or watch the next video.